Vayechi, end of Sefer Bereshit, Yitzi. This year we talked what happens just before Yaakov gives the brachas to Ephraim and Menashe, when Yosef is told that Yaakov is sick and he comes over with his sons to Yaakov. And then the Torah says something very, very confusing. It says that Yaakov sees Yosef's sons, but then it says that he can't see because he's old. But then again, Yaakov says himself, that he thanks Hashem for being able to see Yosef and his sons. So what exactly is going on over there? Can Yaakov see or can he not see? And we saw how this all connects also to Yitzchak, who couldn't see and gave the blessings to Esav and to Yaakov. We saw how all this comes together to a deeper understanding of what seeing actually means. Exactly, what seeing actually means. One of the lessons that Yaakov has learned throughout his life, what is he telling Yosef over here? What is he telling us over here just before he dies at the end of Sefer Bereshit? Hope you enjoy it. Take a look. So, Parashat Vayechi, the end of Sefer Bereshit, and in the end of Sefer Bereshit, we find Yaakov giving brachas to all his children and also to his grandchildren, to Ephraim and Menashe. We discussed that two years ago. Why does he put Ephraim before Menashe? What is each one of them about? We'll link that video at the end of this one. This year, what I want to talk about, what happens just before Yaakov gives the brachas to Ephraim and Menashe? Because just before Yaakov gives the bracha, we see very, very confusing psukim, to say the least. Because at first, Yosef is told that Yaakov is very sick, and he brings his kids to Yaakov in order for them to get a bracha from Yaakov. And then it says that Yaakov sees Yosef's sons and he asks, who are they? Who are these sons? He saw them and he wants to understand who they are. And Rashi explains that Yaakov asks who they are because Nistalka Shechina Mimenu. The Shechina left him and something happened to him in his mind that he understands something's going on. So he wants to know why this is happening, but he sees them. He sees Yosef's sons. Yet the next pasuk after that, the Torah says, Israel Kavdu Mizoken. That he is now old, Velo Yuchalirot, and he can't see he can't see anything with his eyes. However, again, the next person after that, Yaakov says, I never thought I'd get to see you, Yosef. I never thought I'd get to see your descendants, your children. And you really have to ask, what is going on over here? Can Yaakov see or he cannot see? Are his eyes usable or can he not use his eyes? What exactly is going on over here? What is the Torah trying to say? Because it's very, very confusing. Is he too old that he can see or is he able to see with his eyes? What is the Torah trying to teach us? What is the Torah saying over here? It's very interesting and you know you can't not listen to this story and think about another story you see here Yaakov not being able to see and then giving a blessing and we can't not think about Yaakov receiving a blessing for the same reason right we know that Yitzchak it says that his eyes and then what does he do he tells Esav to go do what he does and give him a blessing so you can't ignore this comparison but because of this comparison we'll also notice a lot of differences if we look carefully at the words, we'll notice that by Yitzchak, it says that when he was old, he could not see, and therefore he tells Esav, I don't know, Lo yadati yomoti. I don't know when I'm going to die, and I want to give you a blessing. Here, we see a different connection. The same words of knowing show up here a little bit further down, but in the opposite sense. He tells Yosef, who starts to argue, you're setting up the children the wrong way, he says, yadati pni yadati. Yaakov suddenly reaches a level of knowing where Yitzchak, we see that he's not knowing. And actually, if we also look at the story, in the story there, we see Yitzchak may be confused. Rivka thinks that Yitzchak is confused. She tries to fix this. Yitzchak actually doesn't see. And if we look carefully at the Psukim, we'll notice that Yitzchak, it's not just that he can't see physically. What shows up right before this story? It's that Yitzchak and Rivka see the wife that Esav married and are very disappointed. And then the Pasuk says, but when he got older, he couldn't see. Maybe what the Torah is saying that when he was younger, he saw that Yesav was going down the wrong path. He was very disturbed by it. It's exactly the Pasuk before this all begins. And then the next Pasuk is suddenly he wants to give a bracha to Esav. Why? Because he couldn't see. And why couldn't he see teach us Chazal? Because Esav Said Bifiv, he used to play a game. On the outside, he had a great presentation of being really, really great. And this sort of blinded Yitzchak. Here we see the exact opposite. Yaakov is the one who sees. Yaakov is the one who's not blinded. So it's very interesting. We have the same words, but they mean the exact opposite. And I think based on this, we can notice another contrast. It says in a few psukim, Yosef sees that his father, we see that he can see. He sees his father flipping between Menashe and Ephraim. It was bad in his eyes. And then Yaakov responds, no, no. I know what I'm doing. So Yosef, the one who sees, is the one who doesn't see or sees bad 
badly. And Yaakov, who doesn't see, is the one who sees. But maybe this is exactly what Yaakov's trying to teach Yosef here. Yaakov, for so many years, was in darkness. Yaakov didn't have Ruach HaKodesh. He couldn't see anything. He couldn't see Yosef. He couldn't see beyond the day he was in. He was stuck in mourning. Why? Because of something that he did see. They showed him the cloth filled with blood. Nobody told him something happened to Yosef. He looks at that and says and makes a conclusion based on that clothing, that most external image. He says, it's all over. Yosef was killed. Yosef. And since then, he's stuck in darkness. And that's what he's telling Yosef. For years, I didn't even expect to see your face. For years, I didn't believe I would even see you because I was stuck in what I saw. And now, maybe that's what the Torah is saying. And now he couldn't see, but he could actually see much more. God gave me the ability to look deep, to see not only you, not only meet you, but to see also beyond you. And you know what? Maybe when he's talking about Zarecha, he's not only talking about the kids that are standing here before me, because we see in the next class, when he says why he chose one over the other, it's because of their children. Meaning Yaakov is now able to see even deeper. And that's what he's telling Yosef. Yosef, don't get stuck in what you see. You see Menashe, you see Ephraim, you're stuck. It's going to bother you. In your eyes, that's the external way of looking. But I now who cannot see clearly can actually see much more clearly. I can see learn to look deeper. Don't be stuck. I've lost so many years in darkness because I was stuck by what I see. Learn to see beyond that external side of things. Look deeper. That's what Yaakov's teaching him here. And maybe that's another difference here between Yitzchak and Yaakov. By Yitzchak, we see the words Vatichena enough. Tichena is they were darkened. He lost the ability. He lost their light. Here, it's a very interesting language we don't see anywhere else. Kavdumi zoket. They were heavy from this zikna. What is heavy? Zikna, we know, is 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 wisdom, which comes with time, with many, many years. What does it mean they're heavy? When something is heavy, because there's a lot of it, not because there's a little of it. Yaakov sees so much, and therefore he doesn't see that external side of things that Yosef is caught up on. Oh, but he's this, but he's... No, 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 no. Yaakov doesn't see that. He sees much more. His eyes are heavy. He can't see that basic level of seeing because of so much deep sight. This is maybe what Yaakov is teaching Yosef here. And this is the story happening behind the scenes with this whole dynamic with Ephraim or Menashe or Menashe and Ephraim and Yosef trying to change that and Yaakov changing it back. Yadati bni yadati. Knowing. Knowing is a deep way of seeing. I'm not blinded. I'm not lo yadati. The opposite. I'm able to see through that basic level and therefore reach a deeper knowledge of Yadia. Exactly. Like you're saying, really this concept of Yaakov being able to see even further and even seeing the Zarecha, the descent that's coming out of Yosef. This is what, again, triggers him to ask, Miele, who are these? Because something happened over there in his sight. He can see them, but not only technically, but in a way deeper level, something is stopping his ability to see. The ability that he got back once he heard that Yosef is alive. Once he heard that Yosef is alive. What we've been discussing for the past two weeks, that's when he got back this ability to see in the deep sense. This is now suddenly stopped and Yaakov is wondering what's going on and he's asking Yosef, who are these? Who are these kids? But he knows, he understands that he has this ability to see way deeper than what's on the surface. He doesn't look only on the surface. He doesn't look only on reality in front of him. He looks on the deeper level. He can see on the more fundamental level of sight. This is what Yaakov is saying over here. Like you were saying, this is what he's telling Yosef. Don't look only on the surface of things. Use your deeper vision, your deeper sight in order to see things that can't be seen from the place you're standing today, from where you are today. And like you also saying, you can see this comparison also again with Yitzchak and Rivka where Yaakov in the beginning when he was young, when he still didn't have this ability to see deeper, he is is afraid he is worried that him stealing the bracha will end up bringing on him a curse will end up being a bad thing and Rivka has to assure him has to tell him I like you let the and uncle who's famous he says I was told in Nevoah I was told in a prophecy that only good things will happen from this you don't have to worry with my deep vision with my deep sight I can see that good things are gonna come out of you taking this blessing from Yitzchak and Yaakov listens to Rivka and Yaakov starts to learn the lesson over there and then later on in his life you can see by Lavan at the time when it's time to go back home, how does he realize it's time to go back home? Because first of all, he hears from Bnei Lavan. He's hearing bad things. He's starting to notice something bad is happening. But then, Vayaret Bnei Lavan. He sees the face of Lavan. He fully understands in the deeper level, both Vayar, when he sees, but also Pnei, Panim in Hebrew is a face. But 
it's also pnim. It's also the inside. Always when you look at someone's face, you can see the inside of the person. If you really try to look, you'll be able to see the inside of the person. That's the concept of panim, where he says also over here to yourself, oh, panecha. not only do I see you on the surface, but I see you also on the deeper level. I see the inside of you. The same thing Yaakov over there by Lavan understands on the deeper level that it's time to leave. And this is what he's telling over here to Yosef. The oh, panecha lo pilati. I didn't think I'd get to see on the deeper level your face, but even more so, Hashem showed me, has shown me, he has shown me your descendants, he's shown me your future, the future that will come. And very interestingly, in a few psukim, when Yaakov actually gives the bracha, we have the very famous pasuk of Hamalach HaGoyeloti that we say every night, we say every day, we say many times throughout our life. But just before that pasuk, Yaakov says another thing. He says, Elokim HaRo'e Oti, HaKadosh Borchu, who was my shepherd all these years. And we've mentioned this many times, these ideas of Ro'e seeing with an Aleph, with the letter Aleph, and Ro'e with an Ayn, a shepherd, in the deep sense, have a very strong connection to each other. Like many words in Hebrew, where you flip between the Aleph and the Ayn, there's a very deep connection between them. So especially here with Ro'e and Ro'e, and you can see it also later on in Tanakh, in different places between Shaul and David. We won't get into it, we don't have time. But this idea where Yaakov says that sometimes you can't see with your eyes, you can't be a Ro'e, then you have to trust the shepherd, the Ro'e, and then he's going to show you Hera'oti. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to show it to you. But for that, you have to trust the shepherd. You have to lean on the shepherd, on the Ro'e, on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to help you see that deeper view, to help you see that deeper sight, the deeper vision of the future. Because right now, currently, where you're standing in reality now, you can't see what you want to see or what you're seeing is not what you want to see. You're seeing bad things. enough, like you're saying about yourself that he saw and he didn't like it. This is what Yaakov is telling him again in his last days, in his last hours, he's teaching him again this lesson. A lesson that Yosef probably already knew, but he's teaching it to him again. He's teaching it to us at the end of Sefer Bereshit. Understanding that many times in life, when you see things with your eyes and you don't like what you're seeing, it doesn't look good. You have to trust the shepherd. You have to trust the Ro'e. Understand that you are sometimes guided even though you can't see it. That's when HaKadosh Baruch Hu will guide you through these things, will take you through what you have to be taken. And also in a very practical level, many times when you look at something from far and when it comes closer you see it in a different way so again over here with Yaakov you see the exact same thing but the opposite when he's further away he sees them it says that he sees them and he asks who they are but then when they come closer when he asks to bring them close to him suddenly suddenly he can't see because again this perspective this idea of standing in a certain point and seeing and thinking that you're seeing the right thing it's not always the same when you change your perspective when you change your point of view where you're standing when you get closer or when you take a step back and you go further away. You have to acquire that ability to see on a deeper level, on the level that not only trusts what you're seeing with your eyes, but also trusts the Ro'e, the shepherd that guides you, that leads you throughout life, combining these two in order to reach a deeper level of understanding of what's before you, what has happened to you, and what you have to do. It's very interesting because Vayar with an Aleph is seeing, and then Vayera is with an Ayn, is it's negative, right? He sees it negative negative. The ayin and the aleph is also what switches from a ro'e, seer, and a shepherd, ro'e. When you can see, when things look bad, that's when you need that guidance. That's when you need to trust the ro'e. The ro'e sees, you don't see, you're just following him. And that's that difference between the aleph and the ayin there. And you know, this connects to a very, very famous gemara that talks about the challenges that are going to be at the end of times. And we see the different amoraim in the gemara saying, you know, it should come Mashiach, but they don't want to see it because it's going to be so challenging and so difficult and there's going to be many challenges. And then Rav Yosef says, that's okay. He says, it should come and I should see it. Now, we know Rav Yosef is actually blind. Rav Yosef is the only one there who doesn't see. But that's exactly the point. Rav Yosef is blind and therefore he is not blinded by what he sees. What's the problem in the end of times? It's the end of times. It's great times. But on the surface, there are all these challenges that look really awful and most of us get stuck there and they say, come, but I can't see it. It's going to be too painful. Rav Yosef, who can't see that initial level, he sees deeper and he says, it should come and I should see it because I see right through those challenges. I don't get stuck on that surface and therefore I don't get stuck in the darkness like Yaakov was for so many years, but I'm able to see and say, I see where this is going. I see the future. I see what's going to come out of this. And that's that deeper vision that Yaakov is teaching us here. Exactly, exactly. And again, this switching 
between the Aleph to the Ein happens with the letter Ein, with the letter means an I, which we you see with, of course, and later on also, when Yaakov gives the brachas, he gives to Yosef the bracha of the I, Ben Purat Yosef, Ben Purat Alei Ein, what we say, the famous person people say against Ein Hara, against an evil eye, against bad thoughts of other people, against other people looking at things negatively, and also later on, Yaakov says, Roe Even Israel, the shepherd of Even Israel, Even, the father's son, the concept that we discussed last year's video of what is Yosef? Is Yosef one of the fathers or is one of the sons? Where is he exactly in our tradition? But we're out of time, so we'll end here. We'll let you guys think about it. Feel free to comment below on YouTube with your thoughts. We'd love to hear them. We'd love to see them. As usual, also like this video. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please feel free to subscribe. And again, we'll link the past two years videos right now. And Shkoyach Yitzi. Shkoyach Tuvia, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom and Emirates Hashem. We'll talk again next week.